Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are on this globe, and uh, welcome to our second series of oil and gas related webinars. Uh, today we'll have Andrea Kahlo on the topic of big size flow meters. Andrea is the sales manager of our solution business unit from our international sales division. This uh, webinar will last roughly about 45 minutes, um, 30, 35 minutes of presentation, 10, 5, 5 10 minutes of question, questions and answers depending a little bit on uh, on how many they come. My name is uh, Rob Vermillen and I'm the Global Industry Manager for Oil and Gas at Anderson Hauser located in Greenwood close to Indianapolis, probably better known for their Indy 500 coming weekend as well in Indiana in America. Um, just for you Andrea, the leading guy there uh, is, uh, is uh, Marco Andretti. He is from Italian descent as well. Just yeah. This is why it's leading. Yeah. This is why it's leading, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we start, I, uh, I like to have a safety moment as well, which is uh, very custom at, uh, at Oil and Gas and also at Anderson Hauser. Uh, I like to focus this time on the corona crisis. Please wash your hands on a regular basis. Keep at least six feet or one and a half meters distance from each other. Wear a mask when in public. Avoid coughing in public and use national tracking app when available. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Anderson Hauser roughly, um, and so please go to the next slide. Yes, Anderson Hauser is a global company, over 14,000 people worldwide, and has a revenue of over 2.6 billion euro. Our headquarters is in Basel, Switzerland, and our core business is to develop, produce, and service process and laboratory instrumentation to measure quality and quantity parameters. We own and license roughly 8,000 patents. Well, that was a fast introduction. <laughs> and with this, I'd like to uh, hand over to Andrea so he can introduce himself um, a little bit and the topic he's going to talk about. Andrea, you have a funny accent. You're from Italy, I think. Uh, where are you located and where do you come from? Yeah, I'm Italian, but I'm located in the headquarters here in Switzerland. So, unfortunately, even if working in Switzerland since 10 years, I have not lost my funny accent. So. <laughs> Uh, I ask uh, patience to our friends uh, uh, listening now uh, because they will have 40 minutes of strong Italian essence in their ears. Uh, I am Italian, as mentioned. I'm working in Anderson Dowder since uh, almost 10 years and also with the previous another eight years of experience always in solutions, uh, prevalently for oil and gas. I started my career in gas processing, then now I moved to uh, flow metering, uh, when flow we mention liquid and, and gas phase. So it is a little bit short introduction about myself. But let's go immediately to the topic of the day. Uh, you know also from the previous uh, presentation done by my colleagues that Anderson Dow is a strong group uh, and a strong supplier prevalently on instrumentation uh, for whatever kind of measurement, uh, pressure, temperature, flow, and whatever. The message of today is that uh, in reality we are, mu we are much more than this. We are just much more than an instrument supplier, and we can be your partner in the design, development, and clearly uh, construction and delivery for complete turnkey projects for flow metering solutions. When we talk about the flow metering solution, especially in the oil and gas world, we talk about a wide range of application, custody transfer, allocation, inventory, internal transfer, depending also on uh, the, the, the typical definition that you can have in your country. But uh, if you see uh, the landscape, the uh, basic landscape that I put into this slide, it is quite clear that at every stage, at every step, there could be a different need. For example, in a refinery, metering point could be just for internal allocation or for internal transfer or internal processes. But there could also be a point of custody transfer where the refinery is paying the crude oil from the producer. Or from the refinery to the end user, there is again a custody transfer point. Then, 
different tasks for different metering applications. Today, I want to focus on our experience and how we can support you in custody transfer application. First of all, why or in which um, topic a custody transfer application is different from other applications? For sure, the first differentiation is that a custody transfer system must be sealed. Sealed means that uh, you have to prevent somebody from outside to change the metering parameters. Because for sure, you cannot uh, have a cache register like it is normally a, a custody transfer system. You cannot have a cache register which can be uh, in some way uh, adjusted uh, during the operation. Another important point in an FMS, so in a flow metering system custody transfer, is the accuracy target. So you need to declare and maintain the accuracy of the system during the entire life of the system. And consequently then you need to apply some verification methodology that is approved verification methodology to guarantee that your system is always working fine during the entire life. Said this, let's go more into details. So we say that custody transfer is like a cash, uh, cash machine, no? So if there is the transfer of ownership in this metering point. Then both of the parties are very much interested, so buyer and um, purchaser, are very much interested that this metering point is very accurate, reliable, and repetitive. And repetitive. Consequence of that was that in order to guarantee this and prevent disputes between the parties, some international rules or international standard had to be created. And the two most important one, or the most recognized one, are API and PMS and OML R117. The first is American and the second is European. Both of them uh, basically explain you how to design uh, and prove and test a custody transfer system. Then there are still some uh, countries or some customer itself that they have their own standard, their own, let's say, metrological standard. But if you read them, you will discover that there is always a reference to the international standards. So following the international standards basically prevent any kind of disputes or any kind of uh, problem during the operation of the system. We mentioned before that custody transfer system has one important topic, a target accuracy. First definition of accuracy is not the accuracy of the meter. So meat buster number one. When we talk about a custody transfer system, we don't talk about the meter only. Why I say you this? Because many times I end up discussing with some customer, with some players, saying, ah, but your meter is not as accurate as the meter of another brand, or your meter is much more accurate than the other brand. Yes, it can be true, can be false, but once we have to evaluate a proper comparison, we have to compare the complete system. Because in the complete system, especially if you have to meter, for example, a standard volume, you can see that the accuracy is not just the accuracy of the meter, that maybe it is a volumetric meter. Let's make an example. This is a PD meter. A PD meter is accurate at 0.1%, so the system it is 0.1%. It's not true. Because in reality, if we have to meter standard volume, you have to meter with the PD meter, with the temperature transmitter, because it is necessary to do the conversion from standard volume to, uh, from, sorry, from uh, normal volume to standard volume, and you need to have a flow computer on the top that makes this kind of, of uh, calculation. So all of these elements contribute to the total system accuracy. This is why I mentioned total uncertainty and not the meter uncertainty. So say that this, there is not worldwide agreement about the uncertainty. So the most important thing in a custody transfer system is the uncertainty, but there is not worldwide agreement. And then disputes. 
because maybe the purchaser can say no for me it is it is um, not uh, accurate enough and the supplier can say no for me it is accurate enough so in order to calm down the players in the european normatives they say okay stop complaining we want to set an accuracy target for every application so every measurement application in the european standard is mentioned with related accuracy class let's go and read from this table which is an abstract from that document what we can see first thing measuring systems on pipeline okay i have a pipeline metering system custody transfer what is the accuracy 0.3 percent plus or minus 0.3 percent so this is the at least the accuracy that you have to guarantee if you want to have a pipeline custody transfer metering system then they mention the accuracy class for every single application there could be track loading of loading ship loading and loading lng uh, gas which has its own related uh, normative so for each application you will have a target in terms of accuracy so no dispute is anymore you refer to the normative then nobody can say ah but you are not accurate enough i am accurate enough according to what the standard say moreover what do the standards say the standard also provide a guidance to prove the system to verify that your declared 0.3 percent at the beginning is maintained after one year five years ten years of operation so how to verify and prove the system why it is important the accuracy because the accuracy means at the end money then this is a simple example that you, you can uh, evaluate uh, also by yourself after the presentation for your specific case imagine that by the way you have brent crude oil at the moment uh, more or less we all know the value it is between 40 and 50 us barrel uh, us dollar per barrel typical pipeline in this case, six inch, we handle 80,000 uh, more or less barrel per day. If you have an application that it is declared to be accurate plus or minus 0.5%, it means that you have a band of error of 1%. So band of error means that you are not sure how you are accounting this uh, quantity, if uh, properly or not. It is, a, I call it a black area. Black area of 1% with this number means plus or minus 400 barrel per day or plus or minus $20,000 per day or plus or minus 7.3 million per year, million per year, because the pipeline works every day 24-7. So 7.3 million per year that I'm not sure if I am accounting well or not. If you are an accountant, most probably you don't sleep in the night. And then you want to take a medicine in some way to sleep a little bit better. The medicine is to apply the rules from the standards. And the standards say, okay, pipeline measurement, 0.3 class, plus or minus 0.3 percent at least. It means that your band of error is now reduced and you start to sleep better in the night. But we as Andres and Dowser providing very good design as well also very accurate metering system we can even do better than the normative and we can let you sleep much much better reducing the potential mistake of 73.1 million to more affordable 2.41 does it not mean that this money for sure will be in your pocket but it is just to tell you that the band of error there will be always a band of error, but you can work in order to reduce it as much as possible. The heart of our metering system is Coriolis meter. Coriolis technology, especially in light hydrocarbon, heavy hydrocarbon, oil and gas world, is our first choice. For sure, there are applications where maybe also a magmeter could be used. I talk about water, process water or maybe uh, ultrasonic meter in some gas application. But generally, our first choice is always Coriolis meter. In the presentation, I also attach a video showing you how the Coriolis meter is working. Um, 
the distribution of the uh, presentation will be guaranteed so you can check the video uh, by yourself and maybe some of you already know it what I wanted to highlight today are the advantages related of using a Coriolis meter into a metering system let's start from the so-called typical advantages of a Coriolis meter itself so don't consider a Coriolis meter in a, in a flow custody transfer metering system but let's consider generically many of you are instrument experts and then with them I can easily tell okay Coriolis meter is very good because it provides direct mass metering it is not affected by viscosity and density a very good one now there is the biggest one in the market from Andres and Dowser which is the Proma 6 this big beast with four tubes that can reach up to 16 inch is very compact uh, it works with high frequency so it's not affected by piping or external induced vibration he has not rotating mechanical part is not affected not affected by dirty fluids he provides you quality information like density quite accurate one and he has earth bit verification this is the typical list of advantages that you find in a leaflet talking about a Coriolis meter but what I want to highlight with you today are the advantages in installing the Coriolis meter in a custody transfer system because the advantages you can feel over there if it is not uh, if it is sorry if it is metering mass directly eh, it means that it does not need compensation the compensation is that process that I mentioned you few slides before when I said ah, to meter standard volume you have to have a temperature then you have to have the um, uh, density then you have to have a, a um, flow computer to make the calculation all of these extra calculations are affecting the total accuracy you remember I mentioned total accuracy if I have to invoice in mass a meter and I can meter mass directly then I don't need compensation and then I can be more accurate so first advantage for you more accurate second the most important one one of the most important in terms of operation you are not affected by viscosity and density change of the product how many of you have a pipeline or an application which has to handle different products during the operation many of you I'm pretty sure any in this case if you have a turbine or a PD meter every time you change the product and then you change the uh, fluid characteristic inside the uh, the metering point you have to do a recalibration or re-verification no? to readapt the meter to the new condition with a Coriolis meter you can skip that so you have less recalibration needs and every time you do recalibration especially with a third party you pay money because you have to pay the third party and you have to pay a technician to go inside and provide this so if you have less recalibration need you have less cost of operation for your system we have the largest Coriolis in the market so higher availability where before you needed two meter in parallel for a certain application now you just can handle it with only one big and I will show you later some concrete example very compact so easy to install even if it is big it is easy to install no need for special structure and really reduced maintenance need again saving in terms of operation for the complete system because you have not rotating mechanical part you are not affected by dirty fluids so maybe you can even don't need eh, you can even don't need the uh, strainer or a filter before the meter or any flow uh, conditioning before the meter again quality information you have a density value you have an information about the presence of air or uh, B phase fluid directly coming from the meter it is a major advantage if you compare to mechanical meter again but even to ultrasonic if you have a B phase fluid or presence of debris or presence of entrapped air this meter normally don't tell you anything so you go on metering imagine a PD meter that is moving volume on 
Whatever is in that volume can be a stone, can be liquid, can be gas. He does not care. He does not know. Whereas with the Coriolis meter, you can have live information about what's going on. And also live information about which product is flowing through the pipe. Last but not least, earth beat verification, which is our endless and dazer uh, copyrighted way to have an inside view on the meter parameter during his normal functioning. So you can monitor if your meter is working according to his standard parameter or going out, which means that something is happening and then you have to just uh, organize a preventive maintenance before this problem becomes a uh, loss of signal or loss of results, loss of accurate measurement. Said this, what is also special in Anderson Dowser's Coriolis meter? What is also special, it is the so-called Reynolds correction. So Reynolds correction, it is related to the fact that one of the major comments related to Coriolis meter in the past was that the Coriolis meter uh, were not uh, working fine with very viscous fluid. Why this? Because very viscous fluid have a certain distribution within the pipe, which could be described with a Reynolds. Reynolds, basically, uh, Mr. Osborne Reynolds, introduced a so-called number, a Reynolds number, that describes how the fluid is, or the product is distributed within a pipe. If the Reynolds number is higher than 10,000, it means that the fluid is distributed in a turbulent way. You can see very well distributed within the pipe. If it is lower than 10,000, it means that it has a laminar distribution, which means more concentrated in the center and less on the pipe wall. What does it mean as a consequence? That when we are a turbulent flow, higher than 10,000, I have an homogeneous distribution. So my Coriolis force, which is the force which is metered, and then the uh, Coriolis force is exactly what is um, proportional to the mass flow rate, then it is what I'm metering effectively. It means that in this specific case, my meter is working very fine. But in this specific case, my meter can have some problem because you can see that in this point, there could be some recirculation problem, no? which can affect the Coriolis force and then can affect the measurement done by the meter. For this reason, to know the Reynolds number means to know if there could be the need to make some adjustment in the measurement. After many years of test in accredited laboratories, and collecting really tons of results, we introduced and copyrighted a Reynolds correction factor. So our meter, basically, are smart enough to understand if they're working in a turbulent or in a laminar phase. And if they're working in a laminar phase, they are applying correction in the way that the performances of our meter are always guaranteed in any process, circumstances, independently from the uh, properties of the fluid. That's very, very important because it means that out of the shelter, our meter can guarantee the same performances it would guarantee on a test bench in the factory. Advantages are clear. In a system with a Coriolis meter installed, what I want to highlight is this. You do not need expensive on-site calibration using the process fluid because with this patented correction, he automatically reset himself to adapt to the local proper condition. Finally, after this theory introduction of 20 minutes, I wanted just to show you some turnkey custody transfer meter in solution that we provided. I started this presentation saying that we can be a partner because we can really be a partner starting from the design, starting from the 
uh, front-end engineering uh, to the development, construction and delivery of uh, um, metering system solution. An example of what we did in the past, this one is in Latin America, they are uh, three metering system embedded in one, so three independent metering system embedded in one with a common small volume piston prover. Uh, you can see the initial status of the site, the customer had the turbine meter and bidirectional ball prover that you can see here. They were not happy about the performance of the turbine and also about the fact that they had to maintain frequently the bidirectional ball prover, so they wanted to replace everything. They gave us the mandate, you can see the three line of turbine meter. They gave us the mandate to design a new system to replace this existing one. And our design was something like that. So you can recognize three independent metering system, all of them fully redundant. You can also see the complexity because they add different pressure class as well. So we had also to include some emergency shutdown valve to prevent overpressure in the line and a common small volume piston prover. You can see what we realized as Andres and Dowser. The complete skid and I mention it because here the meter is just something, a, a blue point here in the metering train. But uh, we as Andres and Dowser, we designed everything and we guaranteed everything. So the advantage to have only one partner in a, uh, from your side and this partner is the owner of the metering technology, which is also an important advantage. I wanted to show here as well what we provided for the customer, which was a wet test. Then we show to the customer the complete proving process. And then we set up a proving uh, facility with uh, pumps and with uh, water reservoir here, simulating the normal operation and then the normal proving with the prover itself. These are some pictures from the installation on site, which was also uh, coordinated by us with uh, the activity performed by the customer itself. A note about the performances. I mentioned you before that the normative can tell you something, but that you can also do something better than what is requested by the normative. The target, in this case for the customer, was the repeatability of 0.05% after three runs against the prover. So they were checking the meter against the prover for three times and the difference between the results had to be within 0.05%. So this is the report from the flow computer showing that our repeatability was 0.0095, which means five times better than what requested by the normative itself. Other application I want to show you is LACT-UNIT. In this case, LACT-UNIT, for many of you, is quite familiar. It is a metering system with also quality control of the product. You can see that there is always a quality loop. Uh, and then if uh, the quality loop says that the quality of the crude oil is okay, it is then sold to the customer, otherwise it's sent back to storage tank for recirculation. What I wanted to show you here is that we deliver the so-called really 100% plug and play solution uh, with the full automation, the full uh, quality control with sampling system, small volume piston prover, everything mounted under a shelter, and everything thermally insulated. So we delivered that on site, and for the customer, the only task was to connect utilities and to connect the mechanical part. Interesting is also this uh, ship loading application according to MID, and so European Normative in Belgium. This customer has the task to load the ships, so they had a big 16-inch uh, pipeline, uh, where in the past they had the PD meter. They were not happy about the PD meter, prevalently because after one, two years of operation, the PD meter required a lot of maintenance, 
and a lot of recalibration. So they said, okay, no more. Please replace the existing one with the Coriolis meter. What we did was exactly to retrofit the existing line. Here you can recognize the big four tube meter. You remember I told you that the advantage is that we have the biggest Coriolis in the market. It is exactly done for this kind of application, ship loading. And you can also see that we equip the system with a flow computer to be installed in safe area not far from the meter inside. On the top of that, what I wanted to highlight with this is that the customer had nine different metering points. So how to be sure that this metering point is working fine today, tomorrow, after 10 years by using a master meter, which is this nice uh, meter over here that we installed on a portable trailer. Maybe we could select a better portable trailer, but it is quite useful in any case. And with this master meter, they could verify frequently all the nine existing lines. Everything was approved and certified by a third party uh, company, uh, which is accredited for MAD purposes. In this case, it was a force from Denmark, which approved uh, both the calibration of the master meter and also the MAD certificate for the complete uh, system itself. Other application, it is again ship loading and offloading. In this case, it is a bidirectional application installed on pipeline as well. As you can see from the picture here, the customer had the task to receive from a ship butane and propane and stock them, storage them into spheres. Everything was happening through pipeline, through the jetty, where the task was to load or offload the liquid and consequently uh, recover the vapor. Then they wanted to have one line for butane, one line for propane, one line for vapor propane, and one line from vapor butane. What we did was installation directly on the pipeline on site. You can see here, and also full thermally cohabitation. We did that again in conjunction with the customer. So we were responsible for the entire scope. Some of the jobs were done by the customer. The design and supply of the main equipment was done by us directly. It is also a way in case you as a customer, you have an engineering team, a mechanical team that can do mechanical works, installation work, we can find the best way to uh, use also your resources. And interesting also here was the flow computer with touch panel installed in a NEMA 4X panel to be installed outside. So uh, in a safe area, but next to the metering system as well. So no need to have a control room in this case. Other simple application, nice application, uh, blending and metering system. So blending where you can see here that these two meters are used as a process meters in order to have a combination of butane and propane here at the right ratio. Normally it is a 50-50 or 20-80 or 70-30, depends on the characteristic. And then custody transfer meter here to sell to the end user. So we provide two systems like that. In this case, fully skid mounted and delivered on site. This is the site and these are the installation on site of the different system as well. Another one of the last one, I still have a couple of examples to share with you. One of the interesting one that we also developed is this bidirectional ship loading and loading using air eliminator. As many of you already know, the ship of loading is especially or even the rail car offloading, whatever is offloading is sometimes a little bit a tricky application because at a certain point when you start to offload a tank or to offload a reservoir, you start to suck air because especially when you arrive at the, at the bottom, you start to suck air. And clearly, if your meter is exposed to the presence of air, it can meter, but clearly you are paying air or you are invoicing air and nobody wants to pay air or be invoiced for air. 
For this reason, it is recommended to use air eliminator before. In some application, the air eliminator can be useful during offloading as much as during loading. And like in this customer, they wanted to have a bidirectional system using air eliminator in both directions, load and offload. This is the design that we provided to the customer that uh, liked it very much, where you can see that there is full redundancy of the metering system plus a complete pipe arrangement with valve arrangement in order to guarantee proper utilization of the air eliminator during loading and offloading phase. The end is something like that, which is quite big, especially if you can compare it with the size of our project manager that, believe me, is not a gnome, is quite big as well. So, beside this skid, you can also see other skid, because at the same time we have to provide uh, six different skid to six different customers with six different uh, technical specifications, because in Turkey, three years ago, the government decided to install in every commercial terminal and depot a custody transfer system, inlet and outlet of the terminal to guarantee pro proper tax declaration. And this can happen in every country. <laughs> so uh, be ready eventually to consider us as a partner if it should happen in your country or for your uh, facility. These are some of the pictures uh, taken for this skid and some of the pictures taken of the skid installed on site. Why I show you also the skid installed on site? Because later on, custody transfer system, they must be proved. They must be verified. And they were located in different points in Turkey. So discussing with the authority, we said, OK, if we have to prove them in different locations in Turkey, why not considering a portable master meter that can travel complete Turkey and can verify each system on site. Here it is a picture from the factory where we are adjusting and testing this master, proof, master meter against one of the supplied uh, metering system. So we were physically doing the test to see how easy it was to operate the master meter and eventually which kind of device could have helped to operate the master meter in a better way. So we ended up providing this, a master meter completely mounted on a track with flow computer in an EXD box for hazardous area operation as well. Also, we introduced some crane in order to facilitate the operator to move with the flexible hoses. Because on site, you have to guarantee this. You can see the crane, you can see the flexible hose, and you can see that this one may be the weight of this is 50, 70 kilos, and you need some device to help the operator to make a proper installation when it is necessary. Another important message I want to give you today, we can also provide metering system for gas application. And I tell you, many of you maybe don't think about that, but Coriolis meter is still a very good, very good, um, instrument to meter gas for custody transfer application. But it is very good only when the gas is in certain condition, normally high pressure. Why this? Because high pressure means that it is high density, high gas concentration, and then the Coriolis force can be detected much better. And then clearly the system is working much better. On the other hand, if we have low pressure gas or big size uh, diameter, then cannot be meter with only one Coriolis meter, we can use ultrasonic custody transfer uh, meters because we are in strong alliance with SIC. It means that if you also have a custody transfer requirement for gas, feel free to contact us because we can provide you a complete solution because we are in deep partnership with SIC. So we can use their uh, instrument, providing from our side a complete design, construction, and warranty on the complete package. Last but not least, final one, just the final one, then you can 
really uh, uh, have a complete picture. Why I say this, we are more than a system supplier. And I show you this in this project that we are completing in these days. We've been requested to do full revamping of an area, installing 90 meter in system, three control room, total complete responsibility on mechanical and electrical and civil installation. So like a little APC. What we did was to start from the site. The site was this one where we had to install the complete scope of supply. We start from the design, so you can see the 90 meter in system located in two deck installation with control room with mechanical installation. In this case also we were requested to provide um, oil separator and um, oil pot and whatever. So we had a complete scope of supply. And this is what we are delivering at the moment. Control room already completed. The metering system in two deck uh, installation site works under our supervision and control done through local partner and we are expecting to commission the entire system within the end of the year so messages for you today are for we are good partner in gas and liquid hydrocarbons um, custody transfer metering system. We are next to you because we have a different unit specialized sitting in the, all the four, five major regions in the world with a regional business unit concept. And moreover, we are a strong, reliable and financially stable Swiss company. Then for whatever is related to custody transfer metering system, we are here to support you. And for my side, that's all. Little bit late, but I wanted to, to give you this complete picture today. Well, Andrea, I think it was a great story, man. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was very good with the applications and stuff. Um, before we start the, um, the question and answer section uh, for this, uh, this webinar, I'd also like to point out that uh, Anderson House has a flow calibration facility in Switzerland. Where, um, where we actually calibrate on, uh, on two different uh, hydrocarbons at different flow rates and with different viscosities as well, so we can uh, change temperatures. Uh, just talk to your local representative if you um, are interested in uh, this, discussing this option uh, a little bit further for your Coriolis metering uh, applications as well. So, any um, any questions? Let me see. No, I do not see uh, uh, many more questions. Um, oh, yeah, I see here a question from um, from Bancole. How much better should the master meter be better than the duty meter accuracy wise? Hi, Bancole. I know Bancole quite well. Uh, the master meter, by definition, should be three times better than the duty meter. But due to the fact that uh, in most of the cases the master meter is the same equipment of the duty meter, it's normally required to have a certified calibration of the master meter against, a, um, let's say, a higher prover, which could be a, a bidirectional ball prover or a, a small volume piston prover, in a similar condition than the one which uh, can be found on site. And in fact, it's not the case that uh, in some application, the master meter had to be sent in uh, uh, accredited laboratory to be tested at a different uh, uh, flow rate with similar condition of the one that would be seen and meet on, on, uh, on site. But uh, by definition, by let's say normative, should be three times better. But I repeat, if you have a, a duty meter coming out with a calibration of 0 0.05, which is the best possible, the master meter still have 0 0.05. And so it is requested to provide a third party certificate from a third party authority that tests or proves the, that the, the master meter has some special calibration implemented. Then I have another question here, um, Andrea. 
uh, with regards to gas, are there any specific uh, additional requirements for offloading and loading gas? Well, in reality, the, um, the gas, uh, I would say, we can open a big chapter on, a chapter on gas. Uh, it depends uh, the gas where it comes from. So uh, if it is coming from uh, production, for example, uh, in that specific case, it could be, especially if it is coming from production, it is going into, I don't know, a power plant to feed a turbine, then you have a lot of requirement in terms of uh, preconditioning of the gas, which could be uh, pressure stabilization, which could be uh, filtering. Normally, you can have a different level of filtering. You can have a KO drum. Then you can have, after that, a coalescer filter. Uh, in order to reduce the particle size to some micron because clearly the gas is then processed by the turbine. The turbine it is uh, sensitive to the presence of debris and it can uh, be damaged by presence of debris and so you have to make a proper conditioning uh, of the gas itself. Um, moreover, moreover, there could be the need to stabilize the pressure as I mentioned because if you are feeding a turbine or a generator Normally, you have to feed it at a certain pressure condition, which are the good one to uh, guarantee the best performance. And then you could have a train of uh, pressure reducing and pressure stabilization. So really depending on where it comes from and what is the purpose of the gas, you can have a different adjustment into the system to be done. Uh, purely about metering, it can be that uh, you will have the need to install a gas chroma because you will need to have an energetic value and a Bobbe index uh, analysis. Uh, then we can open another parenthesis. In some cases, also as Andres and Dowser, we have instrumentation that can be, uh, let's say, alternative to gas chroma for, for this specific application. And uh, I really would say case by case, uh, we have to evaluate what is necessary and what not. Also, okay. yes, if people are interested to, to get more, uh, I will be at their disposal. Uh, I, share my I, have, uh, I have one more question uh, for you, yeah. uh, and it's a very interesting one. It's for what? Um, how, um, how to solve the issues if you have a liquid containing gas or a vapor, and um, how will it impact the... Uh, accuracy of the Coriolis reading? Then, it's a very good question, and again, we could talk 20 hours about it, but just to be, to be uh, really um, uh, short in that. Uh, it is important to uh, evaluate which kind of air presence or vapor presence we are talking about, because there could be entrapped air, so there are the little, little bubble within uh, the, 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 the flow, and then, by the way, the flow it is uh, homogeneously distributed within uh, the, the tube, and then in this specific case, we can tolerate up to 15%, 20% of gas volume fraction without affecting uh, dramatically the accuracy. We can still guarantee 1% accuracy, even up to 20%, 15% of gas volume fraction. But if the gas volume fraction is 15%, but with slugs, then it is a little bit different because the slug does not guarantee a proper flow distribution in the tube, and then the response of the metering tube is not accurate. And then in that case, you can face some uh, problem, some problem into the measurement. So what is then the uh, solution that could be interesting to provide? consider the presence of an air eliminator. So air eliminator up front in the way that for sure you can remove the slug. And you can also limit the phenomenon of the entrapped air. Air eliminator can be recommendable only when you are talking about low viscous, uh, sorry, uh, low viscous fluid. So we are talking about the normal diesel, gasoline. So all these products with have a viscosity, cinematic viscosity, lower than, uh, I would say, 20 centistops. For uh, products which have a viscosity higher than 20 centistops, most probably the air eliminator is not so effective. 
because in any case, or you use a very big one, and so you give the proper time the air to be removed from the uh, process, otherwise they're not so effective. So in that specific case, another tip could be the one to heat the product in the way that heating the product you reduce the viscosity and then you can still consider to utilize an eliminator to remove the air from the process. So these are the different tips. Then in some cases if you have also a slag or if you have entrapped air, another cheaper way could be to guarantee a siphon before the metering system. With the siphon you concentrate the, um, the air in the upper part of the tube and then at the top of the siphon you can install a relief uh, device and then you can more or less reduce the risk to have a big uh, lag or a big presence of air into the meter. It is a little bit more empirical, uh, empirical uh, thing. My recommendation, if you can, because the viscosity is not too high, use an eliminator and use lift properly. Yeah, I think it's another, um, like you said, topic for another 20-hour um, kind yeah. of discussion and what to do. It's very specific. Huh? Yeah. yeah, especially, I would just mention one thing. We have, uh, and we are the only one in the market, uh, we have a multi-frequency uh, Coriolis meter, which is called Promas-Q, which has been exactly created to overcome the problem or to meet uh, the best uh, possible performance in presence of air, uh, exactly because with the multi-frequency uh, functioning, we are uh, in some way um, uh, cleaning the signal from the meter from the presence of air. Then it is quite interesting how does it work. I recommend you maybe to check also in, in uh, YouTube, uh, Promas Q, uh, Andres and Dowser, way of working. He will explain you exactly does it work and we are the only one in the market. So if you have application with presence of air, Promas Q can be a very good solution. Perfect. Well, there will probably be uh, more questions coming. Uh, do not hesitate to um, either um, send them on this uh, on this uh, uh, platform or send them directly to uh, to us to andrea.callo at andres.com or rob.formulen at andres.com just uh, first name last name uh, at andres.com and uh, we'll try to answer those questions as soon as possible so thank you very much for your time and your uh, uh, responses and questions if you have any comments, please, uh, we're very uh, curious to hear from you as well. Uh, if you like them or uh, if you like these webinars or not, or if we can improve. Um, and with this, I would like to cancel the broadcast of this, uh, this webinar. Andrea, you have uh, the last words? The last words is uh, uh, if you have really um, already, not even an RFQ, but uh, adapt or uh, a feed or something that you want to start to develop and evaluate, feel free to contact us because for metering system we can really be your partner from the beginning to the, to the press uh, switch on button of the system. That's my okay. word. Perfect. Thank you and have a great day and see you, you maybe next time on Thursday or on Tuesday when we have uh, a new topic uh, regarding oil and gas. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.